Hi guys, it's Jean from Jean's Gems. I have been having some issues with my videos again. Yay! So I've come to the conclusion that if you don't have very much battery left on your um your phone even if it's down to like a quarter and you think you have long enough to make the video, it will cause some problems with it coming out kind of garbled. And so I have been just uploading my videos without actually viewing them. And I noticed that after I had uploaded the one on my um, thrift haul and my Dollar Tree items I got, that it was all garbled. So I had to go back and delete it. It was, it, it can be a frustrating process, but we just do what we can do, right? So... Let me start out by saying, um, yesterday, Adrian and I were able to go out and he helped me because I really wanted to go to the thrift store and to the Dollar Tree because I had some things in mind that I wanted for my series on National Hispanic Heritage Month. So one of the first things I wanted to get was some yarn that was in different colors so I can make some pretty tassels. And actually I found these online for pickup at Walmart. It's called Mandala by Lion Brand. 590 yards in this earthen color. And then this is a sparkle, if you can see it. And it has 328 yards, but they're normally between 10 and $12, depending on where you get them. So they were marked down to $5 and something. So I got myself two. I checked out the yarn at the Dollar Tree and it just wasn't vibrant enough for um, what I wanted. So. I got these and I did look on Amazon last night and they do have a couple colors on Amazon for around the $5 to $8 range. So if you're looking for some interesting uh, yarn that's like in an ombre style or starts in one color and goes into another color, these are really, really nice yarns. They're acrylic, of course, but they're really nice yarn. So that's what I wanted to um, give you a heads up on in case you decide to check out Walmart online or Amazon for those. I did pick up a few books at the thrift. These are mainly, the first two are just mainly quilting books. And I love quilts, but I've never really finished one. I think quilting is something that I really would like to do, but don't have the patience to do because it takes so long. But this particular book shows you how you can make a base of a quilt and then you can applique on and then applique on the actual three-dimensional flowers. And then over here, it gives you the pattern for making the flowers. So I thought this would come in handy. There are so many um, videos and how-tos and DIYs on flowers, and they're all fun to do. But I thought maybe I could come up with some new ones. And this shows all kinds, like a thistle, um, I don't know what a bindweed is, but poppies, and it tells you how you can make all these. So I'm going to look at this and see what we can find. And then, of course, each of the quilts will make a beautiful journaling spot for your 
journal. These larger ones would make some pretty envelopes. So they have some real pretty designs in here that I really liked as well. But my main interest was to see how I could make some of these flowers. So we should do that someday. This one was creating with silk flowers. So it's a little bit different. Um, I don't think it has the applique, like here's one of a fairy, which is really pretty, but it shows you how to do applique designs and different designs, gives you some templates, but these seem to be pretty much, well, this is very pretty. I like the white and blue. Um, this is pretty much one I got so I could cut out the quilt pieces or the floral pieces. This one's really interesting with the pots and everything there. Um, <clears throat> so that I could make myself some really pretty journaling spots. So that's probably what will happen to these particular books. And, um, there's going to be some really fun images in here to use. So there's that one. And the, each of these cost me a dollar. This is a Simplicity Sewing Book. I had to have this because I just love this image here on the front. And I've been wanting to do a sewing journal. I may get to that this winter. We'll see. But um, this will come in handy not only for um, the sewing aspect, but also because it uh, gives you some ideas of how to make, you know, do embroidery, um, some interesting dresses from the time, interesting designs. Ooh, look at this. This is pretty. This was... Uh, I'm pretty sure I read was a 1960s book. So I think in that time frame, they must have liked oriental fabrics because I saw another one or Asian inspired that I just love. And I wish I could wear it because I would wear it. Yeah, Oriental Influence. Isn't that beautiful? Now, this is probably a silk or satin or something of that nature because they call it special fabrics and they're harder to sew. So, I just love the images and the directions. There are some um, artist renditions of patterns and um, I love, love the designers' um, models that they draw. I think that is so amazing to see the little patterns and, and the people in the patterns. So I like this paper too. It'll be very nice to put in a journal um, just as an extra piece. And because it's large, um, let me see what size it is. So it is an eight by 11. So folding these sheets in half will go nicely in a medium sized journal. So great find here i love that <clears throat> i think i i think i need to put this up on my wall or something because i love her i also picked up two candle wicking patterns i don't do candle wicking myself but um these are little pillows that could be a pin cushion or sachet and i thought they would be fun to, and for someone to do and i'm gonna stick those in my shop and I got uh, one of those goodie bags like Kim gets. And I always um, think it's so fun what she finds in her goodie bag. So I found this Raggedy Ann Nandy pattern. 
I got some Stampin' Up Snow Flurry stamps, which are really cute. They are in very good condition. I got this little penguin, which he goes with snow too. And I got a Boyd's Bear stamp. Now, I'm not sure why I would need that, but um, I may just put it up. And if somebody likes Boyd's Bears that much, they might purchase it. It may have come as a gift or something for someone. This one is um, a Halloween type pattern. There's some cats, owls, boots, pumpkins, and aprons. Of course, the aprons, I think you can make out of different colors and they would don't have to be Halloween, but I'll probably use this just for the pattern paper for my journal. Um, I got these Darice needle craft supplies. They're just little plastic canvas shapes, and there's actually 10 in here. And you can stitch on them probably to make coasters or what have you. I don't think I will do that, but I may cover these with paper or something and use them for round journaling spots or um, something creative for the cover. And I got a package, two packages each of these sunflowers. They come in the large and the small. Um, sunflowers are called girasoles in Spanish. So yesterday I did open this package and use one on my Frida Kahlo um, journaling card I made. So if you're interested in seeing that, um, I'm, go ahead and check out my videos. I also got a little pack of these little wooden hearts. They're only one and a half inches by one eighth inch. There's seven pieces in here and I thought they would be nice to add to tassels or dangles or you can cover them with napkins or put little words on them. All kinds of things that you could do with that. So the other thing I got in that package which was a really treat, really nice treat to find, um, is iron-on patterns. Um, probably in my mom's day, which is anywhere from 1938, probably to the 50s or 60s, when you decorated your kitchen yourself, these were actually for tea towels where or pot holders or um, aprons or a runner, but you could actually use them for everything or anything. They have a bunch of flowers and then the days of the week lettered out. But what I like the most about this is on the each of the, let's see, I think it's mainly this side here. On this side, it has a smaller version of each of the flowers. So you can iron them on to some fabric and then the red design comes off. And then you can do this with needlepoint or you can design them with paint. So I really, really like these. And if I'm doing a sewing journal, I may just leave them right as they are in the journal or I may iron them on. So one side is has all the flowers in a smaller version and then you can see them in the larger version for the tea towel. Um, it talks about you use a hot iron on the reverse side with the printed side against the 
tea towel or uh, sometimes these were used for table runners or pillowcases and then um, you can use it more than one time. So that was a fun find. I um, will definitely use these. I used to have a bunch of these and I don't know if I have any left, but I probably sold a lot of them on um, eBay back in the day. So there was that cute little find. Um, I think, I think that was all that I got. Oh, I got these at the Goodwill um, when I was out. And I think they're Wilton uh, chocolate or candy molds. But the reason I got them is because I wanted to see if they would work with clay because I don't have any clay. And they only cost me, I think, like 2 or $3. So if they don't work, that's okay. But some of the designs are more shallow, so I think it will be easier for them to come out. This one is like a dahlia. And here's a sunflower. So I like the bird, excuse me, the bird. So I'm tickled to see if I can use those and how they'll turn out. I don't need any more fabric, but these were on half price and I got this one because I love this edging. And I'll probably cut the edging off and then cut the other pieces in strips. They can always be used for tassels. And then I got this real pretty rose um, tablecloth. No, not tablecloth. Um, bed sheet. It's just a twin size. And I'll cut it down into pieces too. So I love this color. It just is, I have to say that I'm definitely a pink person <laughs> and purple and mauve and burgundy and all those colors. So, okay. The only, the last thing I wanted to show you, and I think it's the best thing I had, <clears throat> excuse me, said when I went out, I made myself a list that I wanted to. Excuse me, I'm still drinking my coffee. I wanted to see if I could find some board books because I had so much fun with my other little critters board book that I made into inspirational quotes. And I want to try a larger one. So the first one I found was this dinosaur one. And who doesn't like dinosaurs? So this one had to come home with me. It's a little damaged on the inside, but it's okay because we are going to cover the pages anyway. But it's called a peak and flap. And it's really quite interesting how it has these little windows with doors that come out or um, shutters that come out. So it allows you, it, you already have a design here for a flip out. Put something in the square and then um, you can flip this one down and this one up and then you can cover this of course you could put some vellum if you wanted to keep the windows this one is the one that was torn out but i still like the fact that the window is indented because you could put something on here that might be a little bit thicker than normal like adding some lace or some ribbon and then it won't um, bother the fact that it can't close properly. And here are two more little windows, similar size as the other one. This one actually flips up and flips out. 
And then this one is just the square window again. So I really thought this would be um, an amazing journal because it has some built-in interactive elements that you can just cover with paper or fabric or paint or however you want to do it and come out with a really cool journal with this particular um, book. And I love these because they're sturdy and um, they last. They have a nice binding on them so you can hang a dangle or two or tassels or whatever you want. The second one I got is also interactive. It's called a touch and feel. So it has um, some different materials in it. But I liked it because it has um, the flap outs too. And they're in different shapes. So you can imagine making this a really pretty journaling spot or put an envelope on here or something like that a pocket and then trimming this with some lace or some trim and the shapes are different so they would look interesting like that this is the blanket one and there is a leaf the images in these are so cute too and here is a rainbow, and then that's the end. So um, these, I think, will definitely be fun to decorate. I think I got these for 50 cents each, so not bad. And we will have a play of um, doing a different preparation of these board books than I did the other one before. So I think that is everything I got from the thrift. So Dollar 25 Tree has upped their game a little bit. In my area, they have um, added the $3 and the $5 section. I usually don't shop in that section, but um, it's there and they have a lot of really nice things. But I just stayed mainly in the craft section and I was looking for things that I could use in my series on Hispanic Heritage Month. I found these really cute llamas, alpacas, whatever you want to call them. Um, there's a difference between the two. But these are just little uh, clothespin clips. And I thought they would look cute sticking out the top of a journal. You could use them as a, a topper for your tag. So very fun. And I got cactuses too. So I had to have those. I also got some of these um, chipboard shapes. I thought this was... A feather but I'm not sure it could be a leaf because of the colors of it but this one to me definitely looks like a feather and there are three of them in there so I thought these would look nice you could um, either put a hole or wire wrap the ends and hang them on the edge of your journal with the dangle if you wanted to. So you have quite a few options with these. I did pick up some sparkly um, 3D cactus. So I was on a cactus theme yesterday. This is a uh, rub-on transfers. These are really cute, and I love the cactuses, of course. And down here you have some little pots with flowers. So very applicable for my series. And then these I couldn't resist because they are um, kind of like a boho flower. 
dream catchers. So I really like those. So I picked those up and those are 3D also. And then I found these wood planks. Now there's six pieces in each section. And the reason why I got these is because they're pretty thin. Let me see if it actually says the, it doesn't actually say how thin they are, but they're pretty thin. But I had been thinking about journal covers because to me it's very easy to create signatures. Pretty much all of us probably think signatures are the easiest part. But when you develop a cover for a journal, it's kind of like your first impression is your best impression. So when you are presenting yourself as an artist or you're presenting yourself to um, someone's family member or someone's friend, you know, how you look, how you present yourself, your smile, your demeanor, all that shines through and helps that person make a determination hey, I want to know this person more, or I'm not sure um, they seem a little guarded or they're very open. So a lot of what we show on the outside determines how we are on the inside. And that's what I was thinking about a journal cover. It can be as colorful and flamboyant and decorative as you like, and it gives the viewer a real insight into what's inside this book. You know, I want to know, based on this cover, what other exciting things I'm going to find in the journal. So sometimes um, I think as junk journalists, we have to think about the cover as um, as that first impression, and then for the inside to m kind of go with that same theme, because we want people to want to open them and read them and use them and journal through them. So the reason for the wood planks is I thought, how pretty they would be painted or covered with napkins or uh, interesting papers, collaged on, what have you. And this can be your centerpiece right on top of your cover. And, it, and you could build around that and it would make something really interesting and unique that for your journal that maybe someone else hasn't thought of. So that's my plan with the wood blanks. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I have a couple ideas, so I'll see how those turn out. I'll probably use um, gel medium on them instead of um, Mod Podge because Mod Podge feels sticky to me when I use it could be your environment you're using it in I'm not sure but so I'm going to use um these for at least some of them for for journal cover designs and then of course my stickers I have those all ready to decorate some clusters and um these for my tags and did I get anything else there? I think the only other thing I got was um, paper bags because I needed some for a project that I'm going to be doing later this month. So there is my Dollar Tree and my 
thrifty haul. The last thing I'm going to show you just real quick, because I know we've been talking for a while and I get on these tangents and can't hush, but I had told you about the, the flip out journal card thing with the house. And um, I made this one. These are supposed to be like shingles on the house. So use your imagination there. And I did this in some blues. And then on the inside, it has the orange. But I used one of Kim Newberg's images from her Daunting Darlings collection. And I just thought she looked like she was looking up into the future. So I made this little quote. <clears throat> Look up from the place you came from and embark on a new adventure. So I think sometimes we do need to analyze what place we're in and set ourselves goals and, um, you know, go for whatever we've been wanting to do. Um, whether it be YouTube channel or our first journal or um, just a set of clusters or whatever. Just make sure that wherever you've come from, whether it be um, a place where you haven't been able to fit art into your life, that you embark on that new adventure of some type of art because it really is therapeutic and fun. And then down here, I just added some of the washi blue flowers to add to it. So there's my flip up house. And then the other one that I did with the window, I just used some rub -ons for it. And that came out cute with the little rub -ons. I didn't do anything else to the inside. So I have some more of those to cut to work on because when you find a, a small little project like this, it's fun to just sit down and make a whole bunch at one time. So that's what I did with my little house flip out cards. Um, they were inspired by Natasha from Treasure Books and then a version that Kim Newberg did. So... That's it for today as far as my haul. I will be back later and we'll work on something for Hispanic Heritage Month. I haven't decided quite yet what I'm going to do, but I have um, mentioned to you that on my Frida video that if you post any of the projects that you've done that have inspired you throughout this journey for the next month, I will definitely either put you in a drawing or send you an envelope of something fun and I'll contact you based on that. But my Facebook group is Lilac Lane Livery Arts. And if you care to share my channel, or recommend it to someone who you think will have fun watching the different things I do. I would really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great, great rest of your day. And please be safe. That's all for now.